Hey guys, I'm Young, a full-time dad and a full-time professional with the goal to become the best parent possible. The Girl Dad Show is my journey interviewing fellow working parents aspiring to be both good at work and parenting. I'm going to do this by gathering and sharing unfiltered perspectives from my guests. So join me as I research parenthood one interview at a time. Welcome, David. Thank you so much for joining me on today's show. My pleasure, Young. I'm really, really grateful for you spending the time with me. I, I know you have a busy schedule and I really appreciate you being able to talk to me about something that isn't necessarily business related. Um, Looking forward to it also. Let's start off by getting the listeners to know who you are. So uh, who are you? What do you do for a living? Sure. What I do for a living, I do a few different things. Right now I'm doing some consulting and doing some writing projects, working on a couple of fun things with you. Uh, most recently before that, I, I co-founded a company. We launched a pretty cool product on Kickstarter that did really well. Before that, I've done operations, finance, a, a few different things throughout my career. It's awesome. Yeah, and I think you're being a little bit humble. I, I feel like you've done a lot more than that, but that's neither here nor there. Because <laughs> you also did something pretty cool before the Kickstarter thing as well. I mean, you've had a long history of like exploring different realms in different career aspects. And yeah, I mean, I, I mean, if you don't mind sharing at least one of them, because I know I know you and I'd love for the, the listeners to know the context behind this. But you even got into some um, stock trading and investing. And I did. That was actually the first thing I did right out of college. I had a degree in philosophy in 2005. There weren't a lot of philosophy jobs to be had, but I'd always been uh, pretty interested in the stock market. My mom traded stocks back in the day. And so I was kind of familiar with it. And Learned about options trading before it was real trendy, but loved the leverage and volatility there. So I spent a few years at different times of my life doing that. And then I've spent a lot of time working on tools for retail traders, professional traders, tools for myself. So my background is really more in software. And then just more recently in life, I've gotten into consumer goods products, which are fun. I spent some time working in a running apparel company, which is fun because running is a big passion of mine. So it's neat to kind of see the business behind that sport. I didn't actually know you were a philosophy major. I always assumed you were a finance major. Yeah, you know, I thought going in for sure, I thought I would be an econ major. And yeah, I really love economics, but like macro econ 101, I just I couldn't I was like, if I have to draw one more supply and demand chart, I just, I didn't find it interesting. And philosophy was what I found really interesting. And I had gone to a school that was kind of more liberal, liberal arts focused. And so I decided to just kind of lean into that because that's what I liked. And at the time, I thought I'd probably go to law school. But then I realized I didn't want to be a lawyer. So yeah, it served me well. It's not the most directly applicable. But you know, the thinking skills are useful for everything you do, obviously. No, it's really cool. I mean, I know you, so it's it's a little bit unfair. I have the unfair advantage, but it also helps to to know you in this in this circumstance because you definitely approach life, both work and parenting, with kind of like a philosophical mindset. Like you're you're always looking at it from like all the different angles and all the the, the pros and cons. Like you're always like assessing it from all these different points of views and. It's pretty interesting to hear that that's kind of like where that initial passion and kind of like inclination steeped from because I never actually even knew that. So even even me knowing you, I'm learning something new about you. This is great. I do try and approach life that way, you know, that's uh, or or that's just how I approach life. You know, <laughs> maybe it's just natural. Yeah, yeah. Philosophically, right. What is the yep. meaning of this? What's the point? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just before we get into it, what are some of the big projects you are working on? You and I are working on a really exciting project related to helping helping teach people how to run businesses, which is something I'm really excited about because I think it's a great tool for empowerment. And as you and I have discussed a lot, it's something that is talked about in a way that makes it seem way more confusing and abstract than it is. And it's actually 90% of its common sense. And so uh, I think we're doing some really exciting work helping to surface, helping to surface that common sense and put in front of people. And then I'm also working with some folks who have been teaching uh, MBA students for a long time and are looking to kind of bring some of their their greatest hits online. So that's a, another opportunity to just kind of help share knowledge. These people are experts in what they do and, you know, just kind of need some help translating that into an online world. And again, I think it'll be really powerful for young people who don't want to go to an MBA program or don't have the wherewithal to do that or whatever, but they shouldn't be 
you know, separate from that knowledge just because they can't get into those universities. Oh man, those are two really great projects. And if I can be biased, I'd say that uh, they're, they're, the first one sounds amazing. I, I think it's going to be pretty good. I think it's going to be pretty good. I actually don't know that much about you, which is so funny because we've talked about so much, yet we haven't gone more than surface level. So I'd love to ask you about your kid. Like, tell me about your kid. My kid, my kid is amazing. He will be 21 months on the 30th. So he's just getting to be super fun and really under, like, he's at that point where he's not quite talking yet, but he just understands so much. And, you know, he's just really joyful, you know, and I love one. Th- I've, I mean, I think quarantine for us came at a relatively good time in that it was just like a lot of family time, you know, and just being, I, I love being able to be around him throughout the day and, just kind of get little doses of his energy, you know, and it's cliche, but like having a kid, it just, you start seeing the world through their eyes and like the simplest little thing, like a little mud puddle or, or a bird or whatever, you see like how, oh, that is pretty amazing, actually. It's easy to get jaded and, and cynical as you get older. And I love how he kind of just washes that away. It's amazing, man. I yeah. love it. And so you have an almost two-year-old uh, boy. Yep. And uh, that's the only, you, you just have one kid? Yep. Just, just the one. Yep. Any intentions of having more? Yeah. It's something we're talking about. I think we both, we both probably like to have another one. We're not charging hard toward that destination just yet, but it's something we've been talking about more and more. And I think sounds, you know, once you, well, you have two kids, right? Like, yeah. Once you've done it once, you're like, well, I don't know. It'd be fun to have a sibling. And it doesn't seem, as intimidating, I think there's parts I would appreciate about the newborn phase a little more if I, you know, not having all the kind of fear of being a new parent, maybe soak it in a little differently. Yeah, I think that for us, it was like we wanted to like group them as much as we could together because yeah. our logic behind that was it'll be easier if we're just kind of like bam, 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 bam. And so we like we're the, ours are two years apart and we we're like going trying to go for the third. But like because I wanted a lot of kids, but we kind of stopped it, too, because what you don't realize in this logic is that they're hard work. And so they're really tiring, you know? And I'm like, this is, I don't know if we can add another one. This is like, this is unbelievable. And it pushes you way beyond you, what you thought were your limits in, in physical tiredness. And so it's a fascinating thing that parents go through. It's kind of incredible. And so I, I know, I know that we've talked about this briefly, but the whole point of this podcast for me is like trying to like, you know, balance between my desire to like keep growing my professional career and also like balance my desire to be a good parent and learning how to do that. Right. And just like any other thing that I like to do, I try to start by researching and understanding how other people do it. And uh, so this is kind of the impetus for the, the podcast. And so what I found is that as I get older and I start parenting, I've realized that a lot of my parenting style and foundations and values comes from my upbringing whether that's mimicking or trying to enhance or augment or completely contradict. But I'd love to start by just like asking you, what was your childhood like? My childhood was great. I think it was kind of unusual in in some senses. So I'm an only child and my parents split up very shortly after I was born. And so I grew up and then they had joint custody of me and they, they were friendly and they lived in the same town. So I had very much a one-on-one relationship with both of them separately. And they were both very, very intelligent people and really never, I don't know if it was a conscious decision, but they didn't really treat me too much like a kid. You know, they, from an early age, they just kind of talked to me and treated me like I could understand what they were talking about, what was going on. And so I think that certainly shaped me a lot. And I was one of those kids who, was kind of more comfortable around adults than kids, really. Kind of feel like I didn't really understand a traditional family because I didn't grow up in one. Like you just said, you know, like whatever you grew up in is what's normal to you. And so I think that always made me, I wasn't someone who imagined having a family, but as it's come into my life, it's just like the greatest blessing, you know, and I'm, I'm so glad that that's what happened, but it's not like something I was planning for. Do you feel like there was like impact in your current way that you're parenting, like based on how you were brought up? Like, do you feel like you're mimicking some of the things that you grew up with? Or are you trying to like, because obviously it's significantly different just at the literal level. Yeah. What does that look like for you? What's the, what's the major differences that you're seeing between you and your parents? 
because of that, I'm really aware of, I mean, he's two, so it's not, it's kind of impossible for it to be otherwise, but like of him having a childhood, you know, and, and that, the kind of innocence and fun that is just comes naturally to kids, you know, I think if kids are put in situations where they have feel responsible for things like kids will take that on, but it's not really the best that there's plenty of time in life to be responsible for things. And so, yeah, I just really want him to feel supported and loved more than anything, which I certainly did. You know, I want to have fun with him and we do have a lot of fun, but I think one thing I, I do carry on from both of them certainly is just the idea that like, you don't know how much they can understand how early, you know? And so there's no reason to talk down to them. And he, it blows, I mean, I'm, you, I'm sure you've had the experience of like, well, how do you know that word? Or how, how do you understand what I'm saying right now? Like they're, That's right. you know, their intelligence is evolving oh, they're so quickly. Just assume that, assume he understands more than I think. And it's made me, you know, he's at that phase where he just will mimic things. And so it makes you hyper aware of, the small things you're doing and the big things you're doing and assuming like, well, he's going to just be copying those patterns of behavior. So trying to be really conscious about that and setting just a good example on a day-to-day basis, I would say is uh, kind of my focus. And then just spending a lot of time together as a family. That's really like, I think that's something, frankly, like I just didn't, we didn't really have that you know, as like a family unit, you know, the nuclear is with all three of us and he really seems to enjoy it, you know, and, and so do I. So prioritizing that and when i said like for me family is more important than work like that's that's a value that like i've become pretty clear on and like really try and live every day and it is important to me you're making some big moves right like you have had a couple of really exciting entrepreneurial experiences hit some really large milestones with you know some of the companies that you've started you've made the conscious decision fairly recently I'd say like even within the last year, six, seven months to like take an intentional approach on your life to adjust it, to meet your new value prop of this time, time over, time over work. I did step away from my day-to-day role there earlier this year. Yeah. Largely because I wanted more time and and kind of energy for my family. And as you know, like being the co-founder of a startup, particularly if you're in charge of the operations. It's not a, a job you can put in a box and say, oh, it's five o'clock, I'm done. You know, there's always messages and meetings and, and that's fun and exciting. And when you're younger, I think that's great. But I just realized like there's going to kind of constantly be a tension between putting as much time into my family as I want and the business. And so for me at this phase in my life, it just was pretty clear to me that I want to be able to put my family first. Obviously, there's like a lot of privilege embedded in that and being able to do that, you know, and But at the same time, I had that opportunity. So that's what I wanted to do. My dad worked a lot. He's a great dad, an amazing man. But he worked all the time. He just liked working. You know, I think that's why he worked all the time. And he made a great living and he supported us. And, you know, we paid for private school and college and all kinds of amazing stuff. But I wish I wish we would have spent more time together. I had the chance to change that. Yeah, that's wild. So because. You wanted that. You're making that intentional decision to change the dynamic in in your kid. Trying to. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, man. Because I I met you during this transition. I met you when you were actually starting to like figure out how to like control your time and work and like starting to do consulting for that exact same reason, which is really, really like I think where we bonded a lot because I'm I I mean, obviously, like I started the same journey um, early last year. And so maybe some similar time we're going through this, you know, like very similar time. And we're talking months here that we're kind of going through the same life cycle in our. Yep. I think that's why we connected so much. That's probably what it was, right? We're both just like, we felt this like kindred spirit. We're like, oh my gosh, my, my brethren, you know, yep. like um, the same kind of emotional and mental journey and, and, and struggles, quite frankly, because it's a weird jump. I feel like with society today and how we qualify success. It's very, very difficult to explain. I don't know if you've ever talked to your parents. But let's actually ask you, how do your parents feel about you doing this jump? What, what do they say? What does your family say about this? My parents aren't around. I lost my mom about 10 years ago. And then uh, my dad passed away last year, actually. And that, that, to be honest, is another thing that contributed to really wanting to go deep on what mattered to me now. Because, you know, I mean, it's, again, cliche, but like losing people really makes you 
realize that life is pretty short. You know, my mom was 57 when she died. My dad was 70. You never know what's going to happen. And like, I do know that today, like I can go to the beach with Milo or whatever. And I don't know what's going to happen in the future, you know? So it's kind of optimizing for the present in that sense. And, and that, that was a big push to really be like, yeah, you got to just do what really matters to you. And there's not necessarily going to be more time. My dad ran his business until a few months before he died, which is a huge accomplishment, you know? And he, like his business was almost as old as me. Like it's a, you know, his other child essentially. And it's amazing what he built. But also, like, I think I always imagined he would have that time after he's working to do whatever he wanted, you know, which he certainly earned. And he didn't get to have that, you know, and that that's really sad, obviously. So that for me was a big impetus to go, you know, you got to, if this is the the urge you're feeling, like, you got to just listen to that. Dude, that's wild. I am so sorry for your loss. And I can definitely understand how that could force you to, like, really rethink your life right like you just like casually layered in all these like incredible tidbits of monumental information that i'm sure philosophically you're just like wrestling with right like this whole idea of like he worked so hard for what you know and then to like you know be able to like spend some time and and then he wasn't able to spend that time and not to say that it doesn't mean anything but like you know just kind of relooking at like how fleeting life can be and I, I can i can just like see all the different variables and like and and the calculations you probably went through and had to go through and uh, not that it's bad or good right because there's no judgment no, no matter which way but all you can do is try to like do what's going to make you happy and fulfilled and i think that you're very very uh, brave for being so transparent and sharing so thank you for for doing that and uh, for whatever it's worth i empathize and i i completely understand what you're saying even though I haven't experienced that um, fully. I do know, I do know what you mean. Like in a much lesser way, I've been like kind of struggling with the same concepts. Like Mm -hmm. I look at my dad and he's still, he's still alive, you know, but he, you know, he has some health issues and and whatnot, but it's like, it's, I don't know where I saw this, but someone said this, they're like, you got to like, look at your parents. And I think he was like he was like a successful entrepreneur, you know, these like influencer types that are on like yeah. social media yeah. about business. And he was talking about like how he had to like slow down intentionally because he calculated backwards how many times he thought he was going to see his parents. And it was like wow. the weirdest thing, right? Because wow. he's like, he's like, my parents are like 70, you know, like the average age, you know, they're, they're decent health. But they're, let's say he lives, he lives for 15 more years, right? He lives to be like 85, right? Let's say that's good. And maybe he lives to 90. Great. But let's say I see them like twice a year because I'm busy. I'm running my business. I see them on Christmas and then I see them at like my kid's birthday, right? Great. So I see them twice a year. So now that's 30 times I'm going to see them. That's 30 more times that I'm going to see my parents. Right. And it's like, and I was just like, what the heck? That's like the wildest concept, right? Like just like blew my mind. And, and so uh, morbidly, I did the exercise as well. <laughs> like naturally you start doing it and I'm just like, oh my gosh, we got to go see my parents. From my perspective, you know, and I know obviously a lot of people have challenging relationships with their parents and for good reasons, but I do think it's an important relationship to put effort into. And when they're not here, you know, you'll, you'll probably wish that you had. That's right. And again, that's something that, you, you know, you, if they're here now, you know, they're here now. You don't know what you get in the future. You know, I think we spend so much time. Yeah. Just thanking on like, Oh, it's gonna be different later. Well, we'll all, ret- you know, we'll all retire to some compound or whatever, you know, and like sometimes people make that happen, but usually life just kind of keeps going on in it's kind of automatic way. And, and that's great, you know, or it can be great. If we can get into specifics, can you like talk us through like what you actually articulate? Cause it sounds like you put some pretty strong specifics and containers on what this new value prop and lifestyle looks like and i know we've had some brief conversations you know over the last few months i guess what i'm trying to get at is like it sounds like you actually have some black and white things that are non-negotiable now i mean i would probably be a good exercise for me to like actually really codify it that way i would say the biggest thing i i like working i get to do cool cool work and it's really amazing to be able to work from home and where you know what i like working is what I like about work is when I can do it when I want to. So like, I think maybe you're similar. Like sometimes my most productive hours are 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. or whatever. The family's asleep and like I just get jamming on stuff. And and I like working that time. And it also means that, yeah, during the day, if we want to go to the park in the middle of the day or whatever, we can do that. Like I, I, 
I got just pretty burnt out on the like, you know, eight to six Zoom meetings. And like, I like feeling like I own my time. And that there's not, you know, how like when you're in a company, like all of a sudden, you know, the Calendly or whatever, there's just meetings getting put on your calendar. You look at your day, you're like, where did my day go? You know, and like, I don't. I mean, I don't find it that productive for most companies either. You're just reacting. You're just reacting. Yeah, you're just reacting. Exactly. And like, yeah, I guess that's what I most want to be. It's just kind of deliberate with what am I doing with my time, you know? And frankly, before I had a family, like, yeah, I don't know, work was kind of a great default thing. But like, once you have a family, like hanging out just with the family, like becomes in and of itself, for me anyway, a pretty satisfying activity, you know? And like, eventually my will be in school and everything and like, but right now, it's really great to just be able to be together. My wife, you know, as you said, having a kid is really hard. And like Kate, my wife has done more childcare than I do, certainly. And and so whenever I can kind of just give her a break or help support her, that's really important to me, too. You know, it's important. That's the other aspect of our family, obviously, is our marriage. I didn't grow up witnessing a marriage. And so, uh, again, it's another thing that, like, I'm kind of figuring out as I go. And it's really important to me to to do a good job. Like my wife is the best thing that ever happened to me by a million, you know, just to be good to her and, and give her everything she deserves is like really important to me, you know? And obviously like well, I'm our primary income earner. So work is an important component of that, but yeah, it's kind of a decision to make work fit into life instead of the other way around. Wow. This you're a lot more complex than I, than I, than I realized. <laughs> That's like a huge amount of very serious stuff that you are navigating and trying to create for yourself. You're literally yeah. designing the life that you want and trying to, and it's really, really intentional. That's very, very wild. I had no idea. Yeah. It's funny. You mentioned that phrase. Cause like, that's a book. I don't know if you're familiar with that book, but designing your life is a, a book. Actually our, our beautiful friend Vic turned me on to, they use design thinking to say like, yeah, what, you know, what are your beliefs about work? What do you want your relationship to work to be? What are your values? You know, and a lot of people would never in life have the opportunity to have that whole discussion. And, you know, like they got to just go earn a living. And, but I have a little bit of breathing room to, to do that. And so it's important to me to do it. Cause like you said, you never, you know, you put things off for a later day. You don't know that you're going to get that later day. Oh man. I totally think that that's an incredible insight and a good way to think about it. And I, I think it's also so like interesting because you're so grateful and humble for what you have, you know, and, and the, you have the humility to know that this is even a luxury in itself, right? I think it's important to look at that. Yeah. You're almost like Zen about everything. You're trying to like find, find the center for everything and like see like how you can, can continue to aspire for what you want, but still be grateful for it. I would say that's definitely like my my mom's legacy in so many ways. My mom was, I, I like to joke, she she was woke before woke was like a thing. You know, she she was a a white woman from Ohio who like she went back. She didn't graduate college when she was young, and she went back and she actually graduated from college the same year I graduated from high school. And she studied black studies because that's what she was really interested in. And she, she was just someone who was keenly focused on people who were underrepresented and underappreciated and under-resourced and, and all of those things. And so she just, it, you, you know, how like the way your parents see the world, it's impossible for you not to have that lens. Maybe it's not your primary lens, but you see it. You know? And so a lot of these topics that are so big right now, you know, white privilege and cultural things and are th things we've been talking about for a long time. <laughs> As you, most of us have the experience of getting older, realizing that your parents were right about a lot of things that you didn't realize when you were younger, you know? And, she was right about so much of that. Obviously, this is impacting your works. So this question is like, how are you navigating the work, like balancing? Because you are also, you know, very ambitious and you're also very successful in your work career and trajectory. And you've done some really extraordinary things. And um, you have some amazing stories, by the way. <laughs> but um, that's neither here nor there because this is a parenting podcast. So we won't go too deep into those amazing things you've done. But how are you balancing that with this new kind of like value prop and kind of direction that you're trying to intentionally build your life for? Like, how do you approach work? I'm sort of thinking, you know, short term, pay the bills and then long term, like build the dream. Whatever. I'm 38. You're always learning about yourself. Stepping back, go like, what is the work you really find satisfying versus maybe the work that you're good at or you've got an affirmation for or that pays the best or whatever, you know, and kind of pulling that all apart and going like, well, 
if you, you know, if in five years I could just be doing this kind of work, what would that look like? You know, that's a, a scary process for sure. Um, or it can be, there's Milo making the space to do that. Cause I know again, like that's the only way you're going to get there. You know, trying to give myself the time and space to reflect on that and dream a little bit, you know, take a little, a little mid midlife pause to dream and you see so many people get themselves in situations that they just feel kind of trapped. You know, I remember that was what was like my first corporate job. I was 24 or whatever. And I looked around, and I was just like, man, if I'm here in 15 years and I have that guy's job who's been here for 15 years, I am not going to be happy. Some days, frankly, I feel like, what am I doing? You know, what am I doing? What have I done with the opportunities I have in my life? And am I making the most of them? And, you know, I think we all have those days where you question whether you know anything. But, uh, and it's harder when you're a parent, you know, you have that responsibility. But it's a great motivator, too. And then are you, are you kind of thinking about parenting the same way? Like, to do what's good for now? Or do you have some sort of master plan for that as well, too? That's obviously a huge component of why you're doing this or are you like putting guardrails around like the aspects of like ad hoc park days like that's like a that's like an untouchable thing or is that is that also is that something that's also kind of like short term and then long term you have plans for no i don't really have like i wouldn't say a master plan that i have certain non-negotiable like i always want him to feel loved and supported and safe you know and taken care of and and other than that, I feel like kind of we're like we're on we're on this journey together, you know. And no, I wouldn't say I have really a master plan in that sense. That's awesome, and that's okay, right? I think that's the that is the plan in itself is to kind of like just be intuitive and and try to feel it out and figure it out. It also sounds like you're you're kind of juggling a lot of different things. So I think yeah. in some ways you can't actually say this is the plan because it, you're doing a lot. You're trying to design your work life. You're trying to design your new life for yourself and your happiness. And you're also trying to design a life where you're trying to build this family and also a marriage. To me, that's what parenting comes down to is it's struggling. And that's like, like you said, it's the hardest thing, but it really makes you grow too. Cause you're like, well, okay. I can pull a little more out of myself than I realized cause, cause I need to right now. Oh yeah, totally. Like, I, I think like the, the, the biggest shocker for me was just like how little sleep you get, like the first yeah. year or two of like a child's yeah. life. Like, and you don't even like, cause I feel like, you know, I've worked hard, right? Like I've, I've grinded at startups and I've built my own companies. And I remember staying up like, you know, all the, all the, all night long for weeks, right? Like sleep on an hour or two and then like go back at it and just, it's just like adrenaline and focus. And this is more tiring. Than that. <laughs> You're like, how could I possibly sleep less? And you can, and you will. Right. You right. literally will. Yeah. Yep. It's humbling. Uh, I, I would say I was pretty very humbling. naive thinking like, ah. Uh-huh. I don't think it's going to be that, you know, we went to like the birthing, you know, the class with other expecting parents. And I was like, I don't think it's going to be that hard. Like we're like, my wife is a champion ultra runner. So she runs, you know, 50, 60, hundred miles at a time. And I've crewed her for that. I'm like, well, you know, we've got this endurance thing down, but like, yeah, it is, it's every day. There's no break, you know? And it's this thing that you care about more than you've ever cared about anything in the whole world. Yeah. And it's mentally draining and emotionally draining. And then it like makes the physical part even that much harder, but you still muscle through it for some reason or another. Like you just get through it and Biology. it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, so your, your threshold is like magnified. It's like, it's so much bigger than you think you can push yourself. And I think that is like one of the biggest, like, ahas, like as a, as most parents that I see go through is that like, they start to realize like, oh my gosh, I actually didn't know I could do that. And then you start to like, I don't know, like you tell me how you feel about this, but I feel like I just have like a bigger appreciation for everybody. My empathy level is like so much higher. You know, and like, I'm a lot less judgmental and just much more like uh, relaxed. And do you feel like you're the same way? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it just, it connects you into humanity in this different way where you're just, you know, you've, you're you seeing this person start from zero and become into the world. And yeah, you see some, you know, kid throwing a tantrum on, at a restaurant or something. And like, yeah, you just have a different perspective on everything. You know how hard parenting is, and like that parent who's overwhelmed in that moment or whatever, like you can understand. Uh, yeah, I think it does make you less judgmental. Pre-pandemic, I yeah, I would have like, I mean, this is all pre-pandemic, but like when I was younger, and I'd see that I get annoyed, right? I'd be like, oh my gosh, that's so lame or annoying. Now when I see when I saw that like pre-pandemic, I'd like want to help the parent. <laughs> like, yeah, can can I hold that napkin for you while you address that, or like, you know, you just want to lend a lending hand, you know? That being said, like, do you feel like that has parlayed into your view on work and the projects that you work on? 
that level of like empathy and, and the kind of growth of like your understanding of humankind. I think it's highlighted for me how important that is in my work, you know, to be connecting with people and like, you know, I think both those projects I talked about, what's exciting to me is like the idea that I could help bring, put knowledge in people's lives that would help them, you know, and like on the other extreme would be trading, right? Like trading, I always said, you, know, you make money or you lose money. That like, that's really all that happens. You know, you can, maybe you could come up with some reason why you're contributing to the world, but you know, you're not like, you're really probably not. And that's fine. Like, I don't, there's nothing wrong. That's super intellectually stimulating. It's exciting. But I wouldn't, that, it doesn't fill me up. And so, yeah, I guess I realized like, yeah, I'm kind of a, you know, hippie dippy person in that sense where it's important to me to have that in my life. And kind of acknowledging that about yourself. Yeah, I think having a kid has opened that up more and more. And, you know, having a kid, it's, it, it makes you very vulnerable in some ways, you know, because you do care so much and they're so fragile and you love them so much. And I think that vulnerability also leads to strength and growth, you know. So as much as I want him to be able to be exactly who he is, then I kind of can bring that energy to myself a little bit, too. Yeah. Do you think that you qualify success in business a little bit differently than you did before? Yeah, I think so. I'm much more. Um, if there were some hypothetical scenario where I was just like, had a little business that was paying all the bills and no one, it had no prestige associated with it. No one knew that I did that. That would be fine. And I think there was a time in my life where I was like, oh, I want to be thought of a certain way and, and this and that and my, you know, and like, I just, I just don't really care right now. If those things came along with something I was doing that I love, fantastic, you know, but like, that's not what I'm shooting for, you know? And I think that's been a big growth process really extending back to even before well really like all the way back to when i left finance and technology that was that was because my mom was ill and i wanted to be with her and like i had i had a great job and was like right right where i wanted to be you know but my mom was sick and she didn't really have anybody else and i didn't i knew i wouldn't feel okay like going to work every day and being far away from her you know and so i think looking back that it, that was 2010. I was already being like pulled away from this, like, oh, like maximize your salary at a certain age or whatever, you know? And yeah, so I think, you know, like that's, who, that's just who I am. And that's probably why, like, I look back, like, why didn't you want to be a lawyer? Like, oh, because that, I, you know, it's probably the most efficient way to make a bunch of money at that time would go into iBanking, I guess. I don't think I would have been that happy. Yeah, in hindsight, yeah, absolutely. It's easier to look at that and see it. And it's really validating too, if you can like do that for yourself, right? Knowing that those career transitions probably made a lot of big differences in in who you are right now. And it's hard to like do that and then like uh, have the realization later. But I mean, it's, it's also really great when those things happen. You're like, hey, I did the right things by moving and changing those things. But I'm sorry to hear that the, the other reason why that that happened wasn't necessarily an ideal reason either. It sounds like your parents your parents, uh, their death were, were really catal catalysts for a lot of change in your life. Well, obviously, well, for obvious reasons, but also like, you know, philosophically and directionally, like it really, you really take those moments and you like learn from it, adapted it and kind of like intentionally dra drove yourself into different directions. Yes, very much so. I think I knew, I mean, to put it bluntly, like after my mom died, I knew I was going to be really sad for, you know, and I saw that as an opportunity, like, well, let's just push really deep. What all is here? Well, you know, I had a, I loved my mom a lot. We also, she was a pretty challenging person. We had a pretty challenging relationship. And so it was just a time to like unpack all that and go, well, what, what all's there? How, you know, how's that driven you to where you are right now? Where do you, where do you really want to be? You know? And yeah, that's because I came home at, back to Santa Barbara at that time. That's why I met my wife. That's why for the last 10 years, I saw my dad once or twice a week instead of like once every three months, you know, so that's another blessing. and. I'm not sure I believe that everything happens for a reason, but when I look at that particular zig or zag in my path, I'm, I'm grateful I made the decisions I made. Yeah. And I, I, I am too. I mean, I don't think we would have met if you didn't. And I'm yeah. also really glad that because you made those decisions, we're kind of on the same journey and not obviously in the, in the way that we got here, but also like just in the, like the way that we're thinking about our parenting. 
trying to build a career and trying to build this lifestyle that that is much more intentional to what we want that is really like it's i guess it's more it's just more balanced and kind of like more thoughtful in the sense of like not being not succumbing to you know what we societally accept as normal success and i think and that's one thing i think is cool in society like i love that you're having these conversations with people and like i think and that's part of what motivates me to be pretty open about the path I've been down is like, I think we all do better when we can be more real with each other. And, and the nature of work in society is changing so rapidly that like, it is possible to work from home and make a good living, you know, for a lot of people. And that opens up different possibilities, you know, and, or work three days a week or what, you know, whatever. There's just things that weren't possible before. And like the old, taking the train into the city every, you know, weekday. Like that's not, you know, some people still do that, but a lot of people, there's other possibilities now. Yeah. There's a lot more possibility. That's a great way to say it. I have basically four questions that I want to ask every guest. So there's some symmetry to what I do here. And so I'd love to kind of just jump into my last four questions and just kind of rapid fire them at you. Sounds great. All right. So what advice do you have for other parents and soon to be parents? I think be kind with yourself. Seek out other parents that you respect, you know, don't think of it as that there's one right way to do things. You are going to get a specific human being and think of all the adult human beings, you know, and how different they are. And your kid, you don't know what that person is yet, but it's the process of getting to know them. And don't judge yourself. If if your friends are sleep training their kids and they're sleeping perfectly in two months and yours isn't, it's not because you're doing something wrong. You know, I think just that, that kindness with yourself. And just to soak it up, you know, like it, I mean, everyone says it goes so fast, but it does, you know, and you look back at pictures from three months ago and you're like, Oh, it was so different, you know? So, uh, yeah, just try and be present with it. I think. Yeah, absolutely. If you could go back and tell yourself one thing before you, you had kids, what would it be? I guess that, you know, you'll, you'll do okay. You have decent instincts and, uh, and you'll figure it out. That's great. What is your all time favorite business book? All-time favorite business book. I would probably have to say High Output Management by Andy Grove, which is uh, not not like a bar burner, but man, that guy is smart. And I'm a big fan of The Hard Thing About Hard Things, also Ben Horowitz. Yeah, I, that's my favorite book. Yeah, can you can you message me the other book so I can like read that one because I've never even heard of it. He's amazing. He is an immigrant, became the CEO of Intel, and. Yeah. Genius. Wow. Yeah. I mean, for you to say someone's the smartest person, you know, that I mean, I definitely want to read that book. Yeah. That's, that's, that's quite the compliment. Okay. And finally, what is the most surprising thing that you learned about yourself um, becoming a parent? I mean, this maybe sounds not great, but how much I like it. Mm. I was pretty scared to be a parent. I didn't, like I said, the whole family thing, I, I didn't really, I just felt like I didn't really know what that was like. And it, man, I love it. It's, it's so, there's just, so much sweetness and light there that is just awesome that's awesome man yeah hey thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today david i really really appreciate it and um, it was really really fun getting to talk to you about parenting but also getting to know you better i I just like learned so much about you and i hope that all the listeners that are uh, checking in um, also learn something from you and can glean some insight on how they can navigate their life and how to be a good parent. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Young. And thanks for, thanks for starting this conversation. I think it's, it's so important for people just to talk about the reality of parenting and, and it's different for everybody. And, you know, kudos to you for, for getting these conversations going. Oh, thanks for saying that. Yeah, I'll talk to you soon, okay? Sounds good, bud. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Girl Dad Show. We hope you enjoyed that interview. If you want to subscribe to our email list and learn more, you can head over to thegirldadshow.com. Thank you and see you next time.